live very stressful lives. Sometimes we have to go without sleep. All of this raises cortisol levels. I don't know about you, but when I am very stressed, I have a hard time finding my keys. I start losing things all over the place. It's hard for me to think clearly. And the mechanism for that is that when we are stressed, we produce a stress hormone known as cortisol. Cortisol is a glucocorticoid, which means it actually does implicate glucose. And what happens is that when you have chronic stress, this actually produces damage. You can see this in a person because of the constant influx of cortisol. But all of these are actually very long-term. And what I wanted to see is, is there actually a much simpler explanation that we could see even in the short term? So the simple explanation is that other cells can't make use of glucose. Maybe this is true of neurons as well. So maybe what's happening is that you're eating your cakes and cookies, but these neurons are not able to access the glucose and therefore they are starving to death and dying. The established way of thinking about uh, glucose and insulin in the brain is that the brain doesn't use insulin. There are GLUT3 and GLUT4 transporters, and the common knowledge is that GLUT3 is what the brain uses and that it's insulin independent. It doesn't depend on insulin. And it's actually other types of cells that make use of GLUT4, which is insulin dependent. I'm sorry to tell you that information is incorrect. Even back in 1998, people were starting to find insulin receptors in the brain. In 2011, people were able to find that actually individuals who were insulin resistant had reduced uptake of glucose in the brain, which is what insulin resistance means. It means that the glucose cannot be taken up by the brain. And the mechanism by which this damage occurs as a result of stress is actually insulin resistance. It actually, the cortisol makes the neurons insulin resistant. And this is how I became interested in ketones because it turns out that when cortisol is applied to the brain, you see very quickly this neurotoxicity. But when you apply the same cortisol with ketones, no damage. Glucose is a, a wasteful, kind of a, a dirty fuel. So you have sort of this perfect storm of a lot of problems brewing that come when your, your glucose levels are too high. And in addition to glucose being a dirty fuel that produces a lot of this waste, the mechanism for clearing the waste also can't do its job if your insulin levels are elevated. Cells have two fuel inputs, right? They can utilize glucose and they, you can utilize ketones. Even when cells are insulin resistant, they can still utilize ketones. What that means is that if neurons are starving, we have a potential path for feeding them. Okay? And if we can feed them, then we can prevent damage and potentially also treat brain aging.